Hey friends, Ash here with Jensen's. Hope you're all doing really well. It's a very rainy, overcast day here today, but I'm gonna be talking to you guys about an awesome fragrance from the house of Floraiku. And get that on straight there. Yeah, Floraiku. This one is between two trees. If you've never seen this house before, it's got a pretty interesting presentation. And there's a, a little more than meets the eye here if you're, again, unfamiliar with the house. And it sounds like I'm in a rainforest. Cool. This house is not cheap, which you could probably guess by looking at this or the box for the fragrance right here. More like case instead of box, but this one goes for $350 retail. So yeah, not cheap. I actually got this one from a website called 80s. I know that sounds like back to the future, like the 80s, but it's actually spelled A-E-D-E-S. So. 80s.com. They've got a lot of niche and indie fragrances there, actually a whole bunch of different brands, and they sell samples as well. Leave a link in the description. Make sure to check them out, but this one comes courtesy of them, so shout out to 80s. As always, does not affect what I'm going to tell you guys here today. We're going to check out the presentation. I'm going to break this one down, let you know whether you should check it out or not. Let's jump into it. So let's check out this presentation, guys. It is very different. We got the name of the house, the name of the fragrance, and the concentration right here on the front. This is a 50 mil size. And then on the back, you have a little haiku. So you've got the owl is watching twilight between two trees right there on the back of the bottle. Then you have this cap, which is very ornate, kind of leather wrapped here really nice looking and it kind of actually suctions on to the atomizer so it doesn't click into place but you can see there it's kind of hard to get that off it it just suctions on so you can very easily pick it up by the cap if you wanted to if you leave this as the cap but yeah see kind of suction and I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys here there you go the atomizer is pretty good it's not one of those really pressurized atomizers where it gives you this consistent mist, but it's still pretty good. And then here is the case that it comes in. So you have the name of the house right down here. It has this nice kind of cherry blossom design on the front. And it is closed magnetically. Opens up like so. And this is a nice soft kind of velvet feeling foam. And you see here a travel atomizer and then two additional caps. So let's check that out. Basically, this right here, you can take off and then you can take this little travel atomizer, stick it down inside here and then use this cap. And now you have a travel spray of the fragrance. There we go, a travel spray. So that is really cool. And then this additional smaller cap you can take and put over this bottle like so. So if you wanted to, you could have this like this in your collection, or you could have this over the top of it. It is used a bunch of different ways. That being said, this smaller cap will not go over top. Oh, there we go. <laughs> over top of this. See, it doesn't really fit. So you do only use this cap. For this bottle not that that really matters but just letting you know so that is the presentation a little more complicated than your normal presentation but oof it's worth it and the badge code here bt19059 okay enough of the presentation let's finally talk about the fragrance this house has extremely extremely simple note breakdowns each fragrance has three notes one in the top one in the mid one in the base so they keep things here really simple this one has in the top grapefruit in the mid mate and in the base vetiver that is it that's the entire note breakdown this one i love off the top you do get some grapefruit there but not a huge amount it kind of floats in and out with the mate so you get these pops of brightness this little bit of sparkle this little bit of sweetness freshness from the grapefruit but it's always there with the mate and the mate really is the the main thing for me even right off the top it, it melds very well with the grapefruit but you pick it up pretty much instantly and it gives off a lot of different facets it's a little bit smoky it's woody 
It has some green facets as well, and it has kind of a leather nuance to it. So there's a lot going on with that one note. And the grapefruit does really play a part in the opening. It, it provides a nice contrast to the mate. If it wasn't there, it wouldn't be as appealing off the top. So it's very important that the grapefruit is there, even if it's maybe not exactly on equal footing. Also, fair warning about this fragrance. I have seen multiple reviews where people said that they get a cigarette smoke kind of smell from this, or a cigarette smoke kind of vibe from this fragrance. Thankfully, I don't because if I did, I probably wouldn't really like it, but I did see some people said that, so just be aware. Now, it's not that I get no smokiness from here, because I do, but it's kind of a light smokiness, and like I mentioned, never comes across for me as a cigarette does. In the dry down, the vetiver comes out in the fragrance more, and it melds with that mate, because that stays all the way through the life of the fragrance. The vetiver helps impart more of a dry woodiness as it melds with the mate note. And there is a little bit of sweetness in the dry down as well, again, providing a contrast, and I think that's something this definitely needs. If there was no sweetness in here, I don't think I would really like it as much. Now, it never has a sweetness overload at all. It just provides a nice sort of balance. This one does not have, obviously, a hyper complex breakdown. It's about as simple as you could possibly get outside of just having no breakdown at all. There are changes in the fragrance, but I wouldn't say that they are huge. In the opening, there's more sweetness, a little more freshness, obviously, from the grapefruit. As it dries down, it gets a little drier, it gets woodier because of the vetiver coming out and the grapefruit fading away. That being said, the changes that are here are not astronomical, they're not huge. It doesn't wildly change from the opening to the mid to the dry down. Little nuances will change, but the fragrance is pretty consistent. So if you like the opening, you'll probably like the dry down. There's a difference there. Again, not as sweet in the dry down, a little woodier, a little drier, but still pretty close. For me, extremely enjoyable, easy to wear. It's a fragrance that I think leans more casual than formal, but you can wear this in formal situations. I do think you could wear it to the office, but for some people it's not gonna be a great choice because that little bit of smokiness. Some people can perceive it coming across with that cigarette kind of vibe. Again, I don't. The people that I've had smell this don't have that reaction, but obviously some people do. So it's kind of one of those ones that is a little iffy in an office situation. I think personally it can be pulled off, but some people may not want to risk it. As far as seasons, spring and fall for me, neutral weather, not high heat, not extreme cold. So your nice change of pace seasons, you know, where it's heating up or cooling down, that's where this is really gonna work best. For me, I lean more toward fall. So basically right now, that's when I think this would work best. And again, that's gonna be because of that little bit of smokiness, the woodiness, the dryness in the fragrance. It, it's more of a fragrance that you think of as things are cooling down as opposed to when things are heating up and everything's blooming again. And daytime, nighttime, either one for me, kind of a toss up, just whenever you feel like wearing it basically. Okay, let's talk about performance. This is an Eau de Parfum, an EDP concentration, longevity, seven plus hours for me. So I'm not gonna complain about that. That's a off skin of course. And then projection, about an hour and a half is when it's strongest and it's an average projector. It's not one that's supremely heavy, not gonna fill up a room, anything like that. After an hour and a half, starts to sit closer to the skin. So at that point, basically, people coming around, getting near you, or as you move by them in close proximity, they'll be able to pick it up still. So overall, this fragrance, thumbs up, thumbs down, somewhere in the middle. I really like the way it smells. I think it's a great fragrance. It's complex without being complex, if that makes any sense. It's different than what you're gonna smell from most other fragrance releases out there, for sure, kinda does its own thing but doesn't have extreme changes. So some people will think that's a little more on the complex side, some will think it's very simple. Because for some people, complexity will be something that changes heavily as it dries down or that has a really in-depth note breakdown, whereas other people are going to like picking out the little nuances, the little nuances as this one changes and that it does things in kind of a, a different way and they're going to appreciate that. So between two trees, 
It's very expensive, 350 bucks for this 50 mil and then the travel size inside. That's, that's expensive. The presentation looks fantastic, in my opinion anyway. I really like that it's completely unique. There's not a single thing out there that looks like this. That is awesome. The fragrance itself, really easy to wear for me. I think it's very nice. The quality is there. And uh, for 350 bucks, I still think you should sample it first. I don't think it's a safe blind buy. I think a lot of people would be disappointed because of that cost. You need to know for sure it's something you want before you pull the trigger. This is a house I've been really interested in for quite a while, just haven't been able to check them out. After having this one and wearing this one, I can tell you guys, without a doubt, I am going to purchase at least another bottle and see how I like that one as well. Kind of want to start collecting these just because of the, the look that they have. And that's gonna do it for me with Between Two Trees. If you smelled this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. As always, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for all your support. And I will see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Stay safe out there. It's coming down heavy now, rain-wise.